Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow 3 bringing you an exhibition match between Vicarin and Haiku on Hills. Hills is a map we've seen many, many times before. It's a very popular map that... Really, it's probably the most popular map that people play. Although Cordova has, ri has risen in popularity since it was released, Hills has been perennially popular for the last several months. So right now we see Vikran is going for Grekum and Haiku is going for CISO. Both players are paused, setting up their perfect starts, making sure they have everything all correct. So Haiku is going for economic start, and Vikran is also going for an economic start from looks well, actually it's hard to tell because he hasn't built Sparrow yet. But he is likely to be going for an economic start very soon. Once the Sparrow has completed progenerating. And now he is now he's going for his perfect start, getting his Octo RPs, and setting up his Arcticus. Wow, quite a ways outside of his base. He's not even trying to protect his tribe, he's just setting it up. Pretty much to scout out, making sure that if Haiku does attack from this angle, he will be able to see it. Although, to be fair, there is there is a way around that. It's just one that Haiku is not likely to take unless he really tries. And I guess Vikran is counting on Haiku not going for a roundabout route past the Arcticus. So, Haiku is also going very quickly for an expansion. He's, wow, very rapidly setting up his expansion. Setting up his first importer in his natural. Setting up his factory as well. They're very good idea. It is worth protecting the main, of course, but it is a good idea to grab this natural early on because it's close to the main, it's easy to get, it allows you, if you grab it early on, it allows you to better defend it, and it keeps it close from your opponent, because a lot of times people will, on this map, stick a base, or stick a sub-base, stick some units, in their opponent's natural expansion, which will deny that expansion, but it'll also give them a really good vantage point to actually attack. And Haiku is going straight past the Arcticus with the Marine and Special Ops, and attacking the main base directly. Vikran is still about a minute in the past. He does have his tribe moving forward, though. He is not going for a pure economic build. He is getting six LCRPs, and that's about it. He is going straight forward from there. And it looks like he's going straight from the middle of the map. Probably going to do his similar proxy rush that he's been doing a lot recently. And Haiku, back about five, about half a minute into the future, is building up another importer, building up another factory. Sorry, another factory, another, looks like a comp No, importer. That was an importer, sorry. That's uh, correct. The first time. Another importer, another factory, another importer. And an ATC. So, both players very quickly getting production up, not really focusing on economy very much, not beyond that first few RPs. Haiku focusing a bit more on economy than Vikarin is, but both players have decided to that the best strategy for them is to rush and rush hard. Haiku has meant to destroy the Seppi and the, and the duo. The Faro is still up, but they will be destroyed very quickly too. I don't know if Vikarin is going to be keeping his units here. And Octo is moving forward. It is going to try to take care of the Seppi and... Sorry, the... Take care of the Special Ops and the, the Soppy, <laughs> and the Marine, and it should be able to do that effectively, though it looks like Haiku is, oh, Vikran is trying to progen around this and make sure that he has RPs in the middle of the map, oh, that's a weird place to put an RP, anyway, Haiku does not know exactly what's going on here yet, or he does know what's going on, sort of, but he doesn't really care, he's getting ATHCs, and that's his main concern right now, make sure those ATHCs actually get in to harass because it ought to stop in the SOP and the Marine, but the ATC is going around this little ridge here, and it is avoiding this triad completely. It will be able to see the, AT the Arcticus and stop at the Arcticus, start firing on it. Not the best thing to do, but I don't know if Haiku is really noticing that. It probably isn't. He's probably worried more about production. And he has moved back his Special Ops. He's not going for that attack. The Special Ops and Marine have been retreated, or... No, they haven't been retreated. No, they are actually still staying up. More Octos coming to destroy them. One of the Octos will be destroyed, but the Special Ops will be destroyed in the process. And Haiku has jumped back even further. He is looking... Sorry, yes, it's Haiku. He is looking about 30 seconds before the battle and has not really changed his strategy up much. Not really focusing on this. He is focusing... I'm trying to tell where he is focusing on. He is definitely focused on... Well, he definitely was focused. He's running low on Chrono Energy, though. He only has two orders left. He does have... Ah, here we are. That's what I was thinking. He put his Special Ops and Marine inside... Oh, that is... That is nice. He's put his Special Ops and Marine inside here. Basically, trying to create a little Thermopylae, but I don't know if it's going to really work. An Octo is making it hard for its own brethren to get in, and... Yes, he is actually... Oh, man, it almost worked, too. He stopped... The Marine did kill itself with, special, with splash damage on top of the Octo coming in, and so the Marine was unable to build an RP in time. Really clever idea, but... Didn't quite work out. Still managed to kill off one more Octo than he would have otherwise, and heavily weakened the other. But yeah, it was a really clever idea. Nice use of these middle RPs. Or sorry, middle... Not RPs. Middle crates. But Vikran has changed up how his Octos are coming in, and he's able to attack on both sides, destroying the Special Ops and Marines. Still losing an Octo in the process, though. But he does manage to destroy Haiku's forces a lot faster than he had last time. So, 
that's the playable pass. That is the final outcome to that particular battle. And now Vikarin, after this battle, is sending his Octos forward to Haiku's main base. Of course, Haiku was primarily building his natural expansion, not his main base. So this base is a little bit undefended. And it's worth noting that a Marine died. One of Haiku's Marines died. His expansion potential has been halved. Which is a very important thing to point out. And something that Vikran actually does mention a lot when talking about CISO strategy is... Hit them in the Marines. Hit them in the Marines, kill the Marines, and nullify their potential to expand and build. They'd have to then spend time in the Armory actually building up more Marines, which wastes their time. Octos are, however, attacking the RPs. The RPs are taking some damage. But, of course, only one Octo coming in ultimate... Actually, no. Not, of course. An ATC has actually come up for Haiku near the Unplayable Past and has destroyed one of the Octos. So, Vikran ultimately does not have these Octos quite as powerful in the base. And one of the is going to be destroyed. The ATC will die in the process. So, he's losing a Faro and a Seppi. And it looks like this is not the Faro and the Seppi that are, that are composing the Triad. And it's a bit annoying. I mean, Haiku is going for this expansion, but he really should be going for this Triad. That Triad is going to be the really key thing to destroy. If that triad stays alive, the longer that stays alive, the more of a chance that Vikran has to really go for a good proxy attack and possibly get air units. Vikran, mind you, does not have any tech right now. He has a reef being built. He will get a reef up by about the 420 mark. Or actually, advanced structures get up by about the 430 mark, should say. He's going to get the reef up by about the 410 mark, actually. So advanced structures he can get up very quickly. He doesn't have the orders for it, though, but he does have the resources. Building very close to the unplayable pass, and now he's getting advanced structures so he will be able to get he will get air units. He will be able to get air units very quickly. Faro coming in for Vikarin, coming into Haiku's main base. Sorry, Haiku's nat well, Haiku's primary base. Haiku's natural, but he's made that his primary base. The main base, of course, not really being used much. And Faro coming in, attacking that importer. I'm a bit surprised you had the forward importer, but it's not a bad distraction. It's just not a great tank. It's the only thing. So as long as Haiku is aware that this is the case, this importer is really vulnerable and doesn't rely too much on it, he should be fine. And the ATC coming in has been destroyed by Faros. So no real change in the situation. One Faro has still died, the ATCs have still died. And no, the ATCs actually... Looks like Haiku has managed to get his ATCs in a better position and managed to kill off both Faros that have come in. So the ATCs are actually getting free reign on the base, but the Faro is, of course, attacking the importer. Not a huge deal, but it's still there. And it looks like Haiku is like has a macro hub. He's likely to get Mar tanks soon, unless he gets machinery. But he's probably going to get Mar tanks to support the ATCs. He may get frigates if he's expecting air units, which he really probably should. And also get tornadoes. It'd really be a good idea to get machinery right about now, because at this point, Vikran has not built any chrono porting yet. He hasn't really gone into the future at all. He hasn't gone past about half a minute above the unplayable past, and is very low on orders. But he does have a bunch of faros coming up to. The south base and probably will be attacking, probably will be flanking. He's no, he's changing the orders. He's not bothering with that. He's going straight for the natural expansion. And of course, the HTCs have free reign right now. But like I said, one spire built at any point in the timeline. If he gets chrono porting, because he has the resources to get chrono porting, he can get it. It will be consistent. He won't have to worry about it. And he is. That's exactly what he's doing. He is getting chrono porting at the 620 mark, and he will be able to chrono port back units. Haiku really needs to start worrying about what can come back. He really needs to basically get air units now. Now, if not sooner. Really the five minute mark. He is getting Mar tanks though, and he is looks like he's going for a major assault. Now, of course, if he can pull this assault off, although the green time does carry chrono reporting, so Vikran does have a chance. But if he can pull off this assault with the ATHCs and actually be able to take care of Vikran's base before any air units are built, and if he can destroy the reef as well before chrono reporting is completed. And like I said, the green time still carries it, so Vikran would still have a chance. But if he can manage to pull this off, he will at least only give Vikran one time his worth of chance unless he pulls off a really sweet predestination paradox, which is possible. Definitely possible. It's something that Vikran would be able to do, and something anyone can do, but something Vikran is probably going to be well poised to do. But it looks like, no, the RPs are distracting Haiku's forces. They aren't going straight for the triad. They are going for the RPs first, and the RPs are going to destroy them. I mean, the RP distraction is going to destroy them. And ATCs are coming in. There is... Sorry, we just jumped back about 15 seconds, I should point out. And not much is changing, though. The HCCs are still being distracted by the Faros. And the HCCs are still actually flanking from the north as well. But that is going to be... Well, that's going to be quite a powerful attack. But like I said, it's a matter of can Vikarin get this far pot? Because this red time wave, really, this far pot, if it stays alive, it will be able to chronoport back and will be able to deal a lot of damage. This is key. This Faropod is now built. It, if it does not die before the Red Time Wave comes, or at least its death is not propagated in the Red Time Wave, 
it will be able to chronoport back. And it is, in fact, planning on doing that. As it has cloaked. It is going towards Haiku's base. Haiku does not have detectors. He does not have anything to detect with. He has no defense turrets. He has no special ops. He has no tornadoes. He has nothing for detection. And this Farpod can now chronoport back. And it will. The Farpod has chronoported back to the 528 mark. No detectors. Nothing to stop it from dealing damage. This attack is actually very fragile, especially since that mech was the hierarchy leader. The mech that was just destroyed was the hierarchy leader for Haiku, or still is actually, but it will be. It will not ever have been, which could hamper the attack greatly. Though Haiku, no, he does not have auto hierarchy. He is doing this completely manually, so he is in a bad spot right now. This attack will be completely canceled once the blue time wave comes along, and that destruction has been confirmed. So, really, what we're seeing right now is not likely to be the final state of affairs. This is, this is in a really bad spot for Haiku. Haiku can still win. Haiku can still get out of this. But the blue time wave is going to come... Or maybe the, not the blue time wave, definitely the green time wave is going to come along. And that dead mech... That dead mech is going to be a big problem. Or Unless, of course, Haiku didn't do it as a hierarchy order and actually did it as an order for every single ATHC. But even then, re pointing fire... No, not re pointing but just chrono pointing fire pods coming back and dealing a lot of damage... That is going to be huge. So, Vikran, like I said, the green time wave is his saving grace right now. He does have his Farpods back here in the past. He doesn't have... He, this is the Farpod that was being built up, and it is chronoported back to here. I'm not sure where this Farpod comes from. It doesn't actually have any chronoported lines. Probably was chronoported back from the same Farpod, though. So, yeah, like I said, Haiku's Atoll has been completely nullified. The green time wave is completely stopping him from doing anything, but he does still have... Oops, the present... He does still have units that were being built up. He does still have some reserves, but I don't... No, he doesn't have very many. Actually, near the unplayable past, he has hardly any. And he, like I said, does not have machinery. He does not have any means of... He does have special ops, though. He's building special ops. They will be able to detect. But he doesn't have any real means of good anti-air. He doesn't have any powerful means of anti-air detection that will actually stop these fire buzz, especially at this point in the past. This is, Like I said, this is near the beginning of the unplayable past. Near the immutable past, actually. Right up the left edge of the timeline. And now... Now Faro's coming in, a dozen Faro's coming in just to finish everything up. This is just going to clean everything up. There's there's pretty much no way. There's a small chance how you can get out of this. He has to play this exactly right, but even then, it's very hard to get through this. He's going to need detectors. He's going to need a lot of anti-air. He does have the resources for everything LC-dependent. Like Mechs are great anti-air. They're LC-dependent, but you need quite a few of them. Special Ops are detectors, LC-dependent, but you need quite a few of them to stay alive. AGC is attacking Vikran's resources, but Vikran has quite a few resources in the bank. He has, I mean, look at the resources in the bank. He has 700 LC, almost 400 QP. He's in a great spot right now. The macro fab is being built up for Haiku at the 1028 mark. This is on Haiku's point of view, by the way. And Haiku is taking a lot of damage. He is going to try to attack, but he doesn't have the units to actually do it effectively. And Haiku is throwing in the towel. He is not able to get out of this. He is, yeah, he is GG. So that was a short game, but a very exciting game. Very clutch. Really, it was attacking that triad. That was the big thing. That triad, that Farapod needed to be killed before it could be built up, before that could get onto the time, onto a neutral time wave. Because once that happened, Vikran could just chronoport it back at his leisure. And really, he had chronoporting at that point anyway, so he just chronoport back at his leisure. That Farapod, if that had died, Haiku would have won. That's, that's how clutch it was. So... That was a very quick game, very interesting game, and yeah, it looks like that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.